Virginia's gubernatorial election is more important than ever as a national barometer, this is an off-off year. If you look at the history of Virginia, it's not a presidential year turnout. Turnouts go from like 70% down to somewhere in the 40s, said McAuliffe, who won a close gubernatorial election in 2013, a year that followed a Democratic White House win. Listen, we're going to win this race because I'm right on the issues, McAuliffe told Dana Bash. Pundits sometimes overinterpret individual races, trying to extrapolate from them the results of future elections elsewhere while ignoring their idiosyncrasies. But a Democratic defeat in what has become a reliably blue state over the last decade would be impossible to ignore and would cause political headaches for Democrats that reach beyond the Biden presidency. Republicans have struggled in recent years to balance the increasingly populist and nationalist leanings of the pro-Trump base with a need to appeal to highly educated, affluent voters in the suburbs. The task is especially hard in the northern Virginia suburbs around Washington, D.C., which team with federal workers and highly educated and affluent voters. But if Yunkin can thread the needle, the wider political world will take note. Every gubernatorial election in Virginia is seen as a leading political indicator. How the parties do in Virginia's governor's race, the year after a presidential election, is seen as a harbinger of how the parties will do in the midterm elections," said Stephen Farnsworth, a professor of political science at University of Mary Washington in Virginia. McAuliffe is a longtime friend of Biden, who endorsed him in the primary, and he shares the president's moderate leanings. His victory in a Democratic primary over more progressive rivals was seen as an endorsement of Biden-style centrism. But he recently admitted that the president was unpopular in Virginia and he would have to plow through the headwinds from Washington. Though he has since sought to reframe his remark by venting broader frustration at the failure of Democratic lawmakers to pass Biden's agenda. He is particularly passionate about a $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill that progressive House Democrats have refused to pass as they fight to ensure the passage of a larger social spending measure opposed by moderate Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Kirsten Sinema of Arizona. So much at stake in Virginia in the short term, a Republican triumph in Virginia and implications that Democratic voters lack enthusiasm less than a year into their party's control of Washington would further dent Biden's political standing after a brutal summer of raging COVID-19 infections, the chaotic pullout from Afghanistan, rising inflation, and lagging jobs numbers. It would also weaken the president's sway in Congress heading into a critical period with Democratic leaders facing a daunting task of funding the government and raising the debt ceiling in early December with tiny minorities. Both parties want the bragging rights of a winner in Virginia. And if McAuliffe loses, that's going to scare some Democrats on the fence on the Biden agenda Farnsworth said. In the end, Virginia may well correspond to its prevailing political character, and McAuliffe could inspire sufficient suburban voters to win a rare second term in office in a state where governors are barred from serving consecutive terms. But a Yunkin victory would also raise profound questions for Biden and Democrats in the longer term that will reverberate in the 2022 midterm elections and the 2024 presidential election. So a McAuliffe loss would have strategic consequences in the state itself as well as being a terrible morale blow to Democrats running for office elsewhere. McAuliffe has driven home a relentless attack on Yunkin, blasting him in almost every media appearance and rally as a Trump clone. I'm running against a Donald Trump wannabe McAuliffe said on State of the Union repeatedly linking his rival to an ex-president who alienated suburban Virginians who dislike culture war politics. Since many work in the government across the Potomac River, Trump's frequent abuses of power held particular resonance. I really hate to see what Glenn Youngkin is trying to do to Virginia what Donald Trump did in our country McAuliffe said that the Trump factor in Youngkin victory might suggest that running a searingly anti-Trump campaign against Republican candidates when the ex-president is not up for election himself may not be as effective as some Democratic strategists hope. But by winning Virginia, Yunkin could also offer an example to other Republicans in battleground states of how to deal with the hangover from Trump's presidency while keeping the base on board. He has offered coded messages to Trump voters by talking about election integrity, for example, and was endorsed by the former president. 
but Trump hasn't shown up in Virginia to campaign for Yunkin, despite McAuliffe coding him to do so. The Republican has also shaped a message on economics that might appeal to both affluent Northern Virginians and those struggling against rising prices in an economy emerging from the pandemic. He proposes eliminating the state's grocery tax, suspending a recent rise in the gas tax and a list of cuts in state taxes and new rebates. He also beat more overtly pro-Trump candidates in the GOP primary. Still, his formula might not work so well in battleground states that lack Virginia's vast suburbs and other demographic characteristics and where Trump's demagogic appeal and lies about election fraud in 2020 have more currency for base voters. Youngkin's race will be keenly watched by national Republican strategists who believe issues like how transgender kids participate in school sports and a furor fanned by right-wing media commentators over critical race theory could help weaken the Democratic dominance in the suburbs. So while Biden and McAuliffe have the most to lose on November 2, Youngkin's campaign is also a test case for how the GOP can improve its competitiveness as it eyes big gains in the midterms and hopes for a return to the White House two years later. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.